What happens when you get faced with a situation that you are truly worried over the outcome of how this interaction might go? But you also know that maybe from the written word of God or just the knowledge that God is telling you, you need to do this and it's in alignment with his word, you have to walk through it. How do you plan for that? Well, I think what we're going to see through Jacob's actions here as he goes to see his estranged brother Esau, we're going to get, I don't want to say a formula, but we're going to get a good way on which we can start praying, planning, and walking in obedience what God has called us to do. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us. You can click the subscribe button and the bell for notifications so that you can receive a devotional much like this one, where we'll read just a little bit of the scripture together and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. Well, as we look at this um, unfolding account of Jacob's life, we now are 20 years in and we're starting to look at Jacob coming to the crossroads of some of the deceit that led him to the position that he was in. And so he finds his way going back uh, according to God's command. And what we see here as he worries this conf- about this confrontation of Esau can be very instructive for you and me when we have those hard decisions to make in our life as it uh, includes ultimately the obedience we're supposed to show toward God. Let's take a look at it together. Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's camp. So he called the name of that place Mahanaim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the country of Edom, instructing them, Thus you shall say to my lord Esau, Thus says your servant Jacob, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male servants, and female servants. I have sent to tell my Lord in order that I may find find favor in your sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he's coming to meet you, and there are four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. He divided the people who were with him and the flocks and the herd and the camels into two camps, thinking if Esau comes to one camp and attacks it, then the camp that is left will escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your kindred that I may do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the deeds of steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two camps. Please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, that he may come and attack me, the mothers with the children. But you said, I will surely do you good and make your offering as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude." So he stayed there that night, and from what he had with him, he took a present for his brother Esau, 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 milking camels and their calves, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. These he handed over to his servants, every drove by itself, and said to his servants, pass on ahead of me, and put a space between drove and drove. He instructed the first, when Esau, my brother, meets you and asks you, to whom do you belong? Where are you going? And whose are these ahead of you? Then you shall say, they belong to your servant Jacob. They are a present sent to my Lord Esau. And moreover, he is behind us. He likewise instructed the second and the third and all who followed the droves. You shall say the same thing to Esau when you find him. And you shall say, Moreover, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he thought, I may appease him with the present that goes ahead of me, and afterward I shall see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. So the present passed on ahead of him, and he himself stayed that night in the camp. 
Well, when we look at this passage of Scripture, we see a very real fear of Jacob coming forward. And this fear comes about because God has told him, go back to the country from which you came and I'm going to bless you. And so Jacob starts going back and he sends word ahead to Esau and and the word comes back that 400 men are coming. So he doesn't know what's going to happen as a result of this. And so look at what Jacob does in the midst of this. He appeals to God's promise to him. He, He goes in prayer and he's very honest in his prayer. God, I'm scared. God, I'm afraid, that, and he's very specific, I'm afraid my brother is going to come and take out his wrath on my wives and my children. I'm afraid that he's going to come and, and destroy me, but I'm holding on to your promise, and I'm stepping forward in it. And so Jacob does a number of plans, and I, I won't say that we'll, we'll agree with all of his plans, but he plans, and the one thing that you can see that his plan is for is to remain faithful to God. He, do, he hears of the 400 men, and he doesn't shrink from it. Instead, he says, well, maybe I can send an offering because I, I, I don't deserve the goodness that God has given me. And he knows that it's by deceit that he was driven away from his family to begin with. And now he's coming back, and he's seeking the favor of a brother that he's been away from for two decades, for 20 years, who the last time wanted to kill him. And so he lays out his fears before God, but he plans on being obedient to God. And I think that that's so very important, right? We have prayer, we have planning, we have obedience. I'm going to follow through. He doesn't know how God's going to bless him. And so in breaking his family up into two camps, he realizes maybe Esau is going to attack one and the other one will be spared. He doesn't know how the blessing is going to come about, but he trusts God and he's unwilling not to have this confrontation. He is going to go forward with it and meet it head on. As a matter of fact, as he's going back home, he seeks out Esau. He doesn't necessarily have to. He could have just shown up, I suppose, but he seeks him out. And why does he do that? Because he's going back to his people as God has provided. You know, you and I are going to be called as believers in Christ to do many hard things, things that we're not looking forward to, things that, that bring fear into our, into our own hearts. Maybe we're worried about a destroyed relationship, and we know that if we stand with God, it's going to be hard to stand with him. How, how do I know that how this is going to turn out? Well, Jacob is in that unknown realm right now, and you and I could be in that unknown realm. We may have a fear that we're going to lose relationships in, in which we love. We might lose family members who will never talk to us again, and I'm not trying to say that God's going to answer all these prayers and smooth all that over. I'm saying Jacob's response should be ours, to go to God in our honesty, talk honestly about our fears, and yet set our face forward to say, I'm going to trust in the promises of God and I'm going to be obedient to him no matter the cost. Because in the end, I know that God is true. I know Jesus is righteous. I know I can trust in him more than I can trust in man. So I will walk in that obedience, but I'm going to be very honest about my fears, my, what I'm scared about, what might happen as a result of it. If you and I would do that, I think we would see a greater growth in our lives of presenting these things before God, but setting our face toward obedience no matter the cost. Jacob is doing that. And and like I said, we'll look at details tomorrow. We may not agree with all the details, but he's, he's praying, he's planning, and most importantly, he's planning to be obedient. And my prayer is as we have hard decisions, that you too will pray, that you will plan, and most importantly, plan to be obedient. Doing so will receive the blessing that God has promised, no matter the outcome of the interaction of your hard situation, whatever it may be. God bless you. I hope that helps you this day. And we'll talk with you again tomorrow.